Welcome to all of you. We are very happy to have you here. Uh, welcome to this Q&A webinar brought to you that, by the Europe Hub Health Plus program and EFSA, the Europe Health Students and Alumni Association. We'll try to answer and address as many questions as possible. Uh, but if you have a very specific query applying to your personal case only, uh, please rather use the email Europe Health, uh, at uh, UJ .edu.pl. Welcome to all of you. My name is Sander. I have a medical background. Uh, I'm from Paris, but med school in Paris and Lyon. Uh, and after the last year in Granada, I'm doing my second year in Maastricht. Hello, everybody. My name is Anna Chatella. I work for the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland, and I've, I am a member of the recruitment team. And also some of you may know me because uh, I am one of uh, two people who are answering your questions when you email us or ask questions via contact form. Thank you. Yes, Adriano Vargas Campos from Mexico, and I'm a current uh, year two student from the uh, environmental and health occupation track in Paris. Hello, I'm Fam Fam. I'm in the second year, also currently studying with Carlos uh, in environmental health, and my first year was in Liège, and this year is in Paris. Hi there. Um, my name is Zuera Paula Hashem. I'm doing my second year with Sander in Maastricht University. My first year was in Sheffield University in the UK. And um, that's where I also did my undergraduate degree in biomedical science. Hi, hello everyone. I'm Fedeika. I'm the alumni of Federal Officer of EPSA and I'm first year student in Sheffield. And next year I will be in Granada. Hello, I'm Hugo, and I'm now currently in Maastricht with Zoe and Sandre, and my first year was in Dublin, and now I'm in the second year doing uh, government and leadership in public health. Hey y'all, I'm Jordan. Sorry for the background noise. I'm in med school in Italy now, so that's where I am. I graduated this past July, and I did Granada Maastricht, and I am the former EFSA president as well as the Erasmus Mundus Association representative. And hello again, I'm Mathilde Foucrier, I'm the Administrative Coordinator of the Europe Health Plus program. And I'm joining with this webinar from EHESP School of Public Health from Rennes in France. Now we are going to introduce briefly uh, the Europe Health program. Um, so Europe Health is an Erasmus Mundus joint master degree in public health, uh, recognized as a master of excellence by the European Union, and is delivered by a consortium of eight universities in Europe that you can see on this map, in Spain, in the United Kingdom, in Poland, in the Netherlands, in France, in Belgium and Ireland. And the first intake of this master program was launched in 2006 already. And the support of the Erasmus Plus program enables us to offer a full Erasmus Mundus Ex Excellence Scholarship up to 46,000 euros to the best uh, applicants. The Europe Health is a two-year double master degree program and students spent the, their first year in one country to study core competencies in public health. And then they follow a specialization course in another country during the second academic year. During the first year of study, students study core competencies in public health. And the content is rather harmonized uh, between the four first year universities. So your choice of, path, of pathway will uh, rather depend on the language you, you want to study in, English or French. And then uh, students do a specialization year. In the second year of university, there are seven different specializations from epidemiology and biostatistics to health promotions and health services management. There you can study in French, in Spanish, and also in English. At the end of each academic year, uh, there is two specific times in Ren France where students all come together to study uh, and work together um, around global health challenges tutored by international uh, uh, professor team. What will you get at the end of the two years? Upon successful completion of 120 STS, each student uh, receive 
the Europe Best Certificate of Achievement, a joint diploma supplement uh, offered by uh, the program. And since it's a double master degree program, you will also receive a master degree delivered by your first year institution and a master degree delivered by your second year institution. So there are many reasons why Europe Hub Health is the best option for you. And as Nicole mentioned, you can study in multiple European countries up to three. You're learning from high profile international faculty. This past integration module, we had professors, visiting professors from four different countries all over the world. You're graduating with two degrees from two renowned universities, and you can pursue your public health training at a higher level. For example, I went to med school to get my MD and many people get their PhDs or other certificates. You can access a very wide range of employment opportunities as I'll discuss further in a minute and you get to meet people from all over the world and with a very unique intercultural and multicultural experience. So I too chose EPH due to its, con its content. First of all, all the students have an incredible understanding background and it's a really international environment where you can learn between peers. Then it goes beyond academic uh, context as you not only create friendship, but you have a family who supports you during the two amazing years. You've all your journey here in Europe up, um, for hopefully for life. Then after all, professors are also from the diverse backgrounds, so it allows you to have a wider context of public health perspectives, such as economical and cultural ones, which will enrich you for your internship and for you enhance your future career. For me, as a non-European citizen, I think for this program, it's quite interesting because that for this program, they could provide you a diverse learning environment. For example, like uh, just like Jordan has mentioned, like you at least would possibly stay in two countries or even if you have another opportunity to take an international internship like for at least like you could have like two three or four uh, living experience in different European countries and also this program recruit lots of different people from different backgrounds so you could have lots of opportunity to learn from each other so that's the reason I really suggest this program to non-EU citizens. As I just mentioned, and so did we go in Fang Fang, you can do so much with a Europe Hub Health degree. Around 20% of students continue on to a PhD, and many work at the WHO, the OECD, and ASPER. As epidemiologists, policy analysts, consultants, medical practitioners, their advisors on health systems, they perform research, they're lecturers, they work in health law, health economics, and health promotion. So, the world is your oyster, as we say. You can do so much with a Europe Hub Health degree. And so many people come from so many different backgrounds and go into so many different fields afterwards. The diversity is one of the strengths of our program. And actually, is um, one thing emphasized by our alumni, second to quality of education. So the graph here you can see are the 39 different nationalities uh, present in the two cohorts this year. So the year one students and the year two students. Uh, so you, one of the strengths of this program is that you will be able to study with uh, students and professors from very diverse background nationalities. Participation costs for the two years are uh, 16,000 euros for non-European students and 11,000 euros for European students. So who is considered as European students is the citizen of the 27 member states of the Euro European Union, plus the United Kingdom, Macedonia, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Turkey, and Serbia. So for the students who are not in this category, they are considered an, as uh, non-European students. What is included in this participation cost so for the two years is uh, enrollment of all uh, teaching units and modules, access to related education resources, to the library, to document uh, centers and related services, uh, participation in examination, uh, diplomas, certificates, and social events uh, during the integration modules in REN, which are the two study pe periods at the end of uh, each academic year uh, we've talked before. 
Uh, what is not included is accommodation, food, uh, international travel uh, between the your year one and your year two location, uh, transportation on site, uh, insurance, and visa costs. You have the opportunity to apply uh, for Erasmus Mundus Excellence Scholarship funded by, by the European Commission, up to 46,000 euros that covers all the participation costs that I've just described, and also includes a stipend for accommodation and travel costs, so your daily expenses. About admission requirements, uh, you should have and provide uh, your bachelor degree uh, mm, or another certified equivalent. It, everything depends on different uh, educational systems. So, as you know, in some countries, you don't have bachelor, you don't have master, but you are, um, um, uh, your title is a bit different. Please do not worry. Uh, the thing is, it should be at least your undergrad um, degree. Um, and please do not uh, worry about uh, this 180 ECTS. ECTS is a credit system used in Europe. If you are not sure, you can always ask us about your eligibility uh, when you have this or that diploma. And um, it's our task to uh, check and to compare and to check if this is equivalent of uh, our, let's say our European uh, bachelor degree and uh, 180 ECTS. Uh, I think uh, the most important part of these requirements is related to language. Uh, some of you are aware that uh, um, uh, our requirements must be followed uh, by our by ourselves also. There is no exceptions. The rules are published on the website. And uh, you have to have the language proficiency proof. Um, English is obligatory for all participants, then Spanish and French, if you choose the pathway, including Spanish or uh, courses, um, academic year um, in Spanish or French. The application is fully online. Uh, you don't uh, need to send us any documents now um, on this stage of the procedure. You don't need to send us anything um, in, in paper version, original version. Uh, although, please remember that when you enter, the, you, if your application is selected, and uh, if you are accepted, if you um, uh, enter your first year and then second year university, uh, you may be asked for a true original paper version of your diploma or official electronic version. It depends on the university. For instance, I come from second year university from Jagiellonian University, as I said before, and we, to ask for such documents. This is, um, uh, this is uh, because of our local regulations, we have to have your diplomas here. And uh, a copy of a valid passport. And uh, let me answer also a question which uh, I see quite, quite often, maybe not too often, but sometimes. What if a candidate does not have a valid passport at the moment, is still waiting for his or her new passport. It is still possible to apply. Also, uh, it's your responsibility to send us a copy of your passport once you receive it. Such cases also can, can, can happen. Regarding the CV, uh, we strongly recommend uh, to use a Europass form um, as it's preferred by us. However, it's not uh, mandatory only. Uh, recommended. Then motivation letter or cover letter. Uh, I also saw in the chat box the question about the length of uh, this uh, CV. We ask uh, for not exceeding uh, 600 words and of course in English, not in Spanish, not in French. Uh, actually all documents should be provided in, um, in English 
um, translated, but uh, it should be official translation into, into English. Uh, then uh, copies, uh, two copies um, of uh, previous higher education degree or degrees, uh, at least bachelor, as I said, and uh, also official transcripts. By transcript, as sometimes it is not clear, transcript is not the same as um, degree diploma. It's uh, the um, certificate, so the confirmation of all the grades of all modules you followed during your study program. So it's, uh, let's say, a piece of paper um, where we can see all grades you received during your bachelor or another master program. Uh, language proficiency proof. Uh, this is, um, this, as I said, this is very important. And uh, please uh, uh, follow the, the, the rules because we cannot do any exceptions. So only for some countries which are considered uh, countries, um, uh, in, uh, majority native uh, English uh, speakers, only for them there are, uh, there are, let's say, exceptions. Actually, it's another rule, not, not exception. For all other countries, like for instance, we received many questions from Nigeria, and if the candidate uh, holds a certificate from university in Nigeria confirming that he or she um, was studying uh, full time in English, uh, sorry, Nigeria is not on the list of, of these countries. Uh, and you need uh, the valid, uh, not too old um, English test results. Uh, we also receive uh, many questions uh, related to so-called proof of residence. This is only for scholarship candidates because this, the amount of scholarship is um, depending, uh, among others, on the location you are at the moment of uh, applying. Therefore, we ask for this proof of residence. Um, please do not worry if you are not sure if this is a good proof of residence. Um, because uh, this proof of residence, even if it's not excellent, it does not influence the application procedure. It is a formal um, requirement, yes, and you need to provide it, provide it but it's not being evaluated. Um, and also you need to have two references. Uh, so the references from two uh, referees, uh, at least one of them should be from your academic uh, wor uh, world or environment or from your employer. Of course, both of them can be from academic teachers or both from employers. And uh, first of all, you should provide uh, within the application form, uh, you should provide the details of your referees, like the main position and email address. And please double check, be sure that the email address is correct. Uh, as it happens really often that the request uh, for recommendation cannot be delivered to your referee uh, because of a typo or other mistake. So please double check. If you have doubts, you, uh, I would recommend you to contact your referee and ask if he or she received such request from us on the platform. The request is sent automatically. Therefore, sometimes it also happens that such request uh, is considered a uh, spam and may be found only in the spam box. So please, just in case, uh, you may always, I hope you may always uh, contact your referees and ask if he or she received you know, this uh, reference, um, this request. Uh, please uh, be uh, careful when you uh, fill in within the application form, you fill in the section related to your referees, please save this information as it happens that everything is filled in except the small section related to the name and the position and the uh, email address of your referee and, uh, and it must be filled in as well. 
I think for admission requirements, briefly, it can be this, Mathilde. And now application documents. Uh, of course, I, I, I said something already mm, commenting the previous slide. Um, another recommendation from us, please start uh, with uh, checking uh, instruction for applicants. This document is accessible from the main website of uh, application platform. And also a separate question, uh, separate section is about frequently ask, uh, asked que uh, questions, uh, because many of questions, many of answers to your questions may be found there. And it goes faster, because when we answer your questions sent via email or contact form, um, sorry, we don't work 24 hours uh, per day. So sometimes uh, you have to wait uh, for our answer. Sorry for that, but we really receive many, many, many questions. And sometimes it would be really faster if you check uh, if such question may be answered uh, with instructions or um, fact section, FAQ Q section. Um, so providing valid email address, yes. Uh, I would add that also when you register, maybe some of you are not registered yet. Uh, so when you register on the platform, please uh, double check if your email address uh, is uh, correct. Also, if there is any kind of typo, we cannot do anything. We cannot even send your email, please correct it because we don't know your email address. Uh, CV in your past format, which is highly preferred by us, although not uh, mandatory. Uh, academic uh, records, uh, okay, um, it may be provisional at this stage. I mean, um, for this, uh, for the application, uh, it may be also provisional. It refers mostly, but not only, uh, to students who are now on their final year of uh, bachelor program. Uh, please remember that you are also allowed to apply. Uh, of course, you don't have even provisional degree, but sometimes it happens that you have provisional transcripts, not the official final ones. Uh, and it's allowed also if you are on your final year of uh, study pro bachelor study program, you should indicate it clearly. Uh, and also you should, instead of providing your uh, diploma, your degree, uh, please uh, provide a document issued by your university um, confirming the expected date of graduation. Of course, date, maybe just month. It should be, um, it should be, of course, 2023 as the latest, and it should be early enough uh, to, for instance, to receive a visa uh, and, and, and um, register to first year university. Uh, so um, this date, it can be, we, we also accept if it's just month because sometimes the university you are now currently uh, studying in does not know um, the exact date. Uh, and of course, it's your responsibility to provide the final degree before the academic year of EPH starts. I think that's all in general about this slide, Mathilde, thank you. And uh, what makes a good application? Uh, let me also start this, uh, this subject. Um, so uh, when you um, write your motivation letter, because this is one of also important parts of your application. So uh, please try to explain why you and why EPH? Uh, so it should be your motivation, uh, explaining motivation 
uh, why Europe of Health and also why the second year specialization. Uh, our alumni, our current students, will also talk a little bit uh, about it uh, in a moment. So, uh, so, so about this, how to motivate. Now, educational credentials. Please provide all uh, Mars grades documents you have um, till uh, till uh, till now. Uh, then, regarding professional, ex uh, of course, it's about bachelor and uh, sometimes a master program. It's not about high school. Then, professional experience. Uh, those of you who had already started the um, application, uh, you know that there are several sections within application form because we separated it. Please uh, read it carefully and fill in uh, with uh, your experience uh, in public health, but also if you have in healthcare or social work uh, sector and another sector. And also we ask you for different form, different types of uh, employment, also for full-time employment, but also volunteer work, which is very important also, and the placement intern internships, summer jobs as well. Uh, please be proud of your experience in this, in this uh, work section. Uh, if you are not sure, sometimes uh, candidates are not sure on where to put this or that experience, please do not worry. The most important is to include it if it's something important for uh, EPH. Then international project or prospects. Um, please uh, remember that it's not only your experience when you are abroad. Yes, if you are studying abroad, yes, it is important. If you are working abroad, it is important. But also, if you worked for an international organization, but within in your home country, you can, you may, you should also mention it because it will also take into consideration. Then uh, the last uh, among these criteria, the last part, personal skills. And here, not everything depends on your own because, of course, it depends on you, on what you, um, what you say in your CV, for instance, but also it depends on your uh, referees. So maybe such tip uh, when you choose your referee, please be sure that he or she will do it and will do it on time. And will be and everything will be okay. So just to um, offer up like a student perspective on how to have like a really good applications, I would mostly reiterate what um, Anna has already said, but just add a little bit extra. I think um, focusing on your CV and your motivational letter, just ensure that your CV is up to date ensure that it has all the important information, all the important things you've engaged in in the last couple of years. Um, your motivational letter, I would say, should also be reflective of who you are and your interests as well in public health. And this would be able to answer the questions of why you, why should you be chosen and also your second year, your second year interests. Because if you explain your interest in public health, it would make sense why you've chosen the um, university you've chosen for your second year. So I'd say um, work on your motivational letter, make sure it stands out. Also make sure that it's succinct because you have a 600 word um, cap, but try and make it reflective of who you are. Everything relevant about you should be in there, but not, not extra, not too many things because you don't have the space to be able to put even if it's random things that you've engaged in and you feel like is relevant, just try and keep it succinct. So yeah, that's my advice. I'm using currently my, my classmates' computer from Bang also. We are here in, in school in Paris. Um, so what makes a good application? Okay, I will try not to be obvious, to say the obvious things and what you, you can find online. Um, we might have all the same courses, the same education, the same grades maybe, but there is one thing that cannot be replicated. And this is like our personal story and our motivation. 
um, your interest should be your inspiration uh, to show what, why are, you are the most suitable for a, for a place in EPH. Um, so this is what makes you unique. Uh, I'm sure that um, all of you are interested in, in public health and in health improvement. And well, according to your qualities, your desires and your background, um, why um, what, is, what is the best option or the best track you can take in EPH? You have to think about it. You have to check the, the curriculum of, the, of the, all the EPH tracks and to find yourself there and in the future, uh, in 10 years, in five years, in, in all your life. So don't doubt on expressing who you are uh, in, um, in the motivation letter. We received also a few questions about selection and scholarships. How many students per cohort and how many of them are scholarship holders? Over the last few cohorts, there was about 40 students uh, per cohort. So about 80 students uh, um, in one academic year and year one uh, and year two. And about half of them are scholarship holders. Uh, in, in the last few cohorts, even a, a bit more non-scholarship Holder students. Do you have a quota for specific countries? Uh, no, uh, we don't have uh, quotas. Students from all countries uh, can apply for an Erasmus Mundus Excellent Scholarship, but it's true that um, we have some extra scholarship funded by uh, European Union programs available in 2023 for students from the following countries in Western Balkans, uh, Central Asia. Gulf countries and South Africa, so you can see the, the full lists uh, on the PowerPoint. So those are extra scholarships that the consortium is able to offer this year. Usually we have also less candidates from French and Spanish Spanish speaking pathway. So if you have a, the language requirements, if you speak French and you speak Spanish, don't hesitate to, to apply as well. Um, and we also received questions about scholarship. How do they take into account uh, daily cost, installation costs, travel costs? So it just to, to make clear that scholarship are fixed amounts. The application platform which uh, mm, from my point of view what is the most important that you have uh, links to the documents i've mentioned um, i've just mentioned instruction for um, this year applicants and frequently uh, asked questions the third document which is linked here is about um, technical accessibility for all uh, people because this is According to our uh, regulations, uh, this is something we should have. Uh, although um, the, uh, the email address, which is uh, provided in this section, is not for not for questions related to applications. So I would say that uh, probably you won't use to you won't need to to use it. Uh, what else? The deadlines. So January, January 11th, 2023 is the deadline for all candidates for scholarship. Also answering one of the questions you, some candidates asked, um, there's no need to apply uh, separate, separately for the study program and for scholarship. Uh, when you register uh, as scholarship applicant, it covers both. Um, so it covers scholarship, issue and uh, registering for first year and then second year a university. Then for the candidates uh, who wish to uh, start the EPH program in Liège, uh, uh, in, in Belgium, uh, for non-European candidates, and of course in this case it's for, for self-funded students, <clears throat> the deadline is uh, March 1st, uh, and then for uh, the rest, uh, which means for all other self-funded candidates, uh, the deadline is uh, is May 9th. Uh, and uh, and and what? And please don't wait till the, the last moment because this is just a platform. And if anything happens just uh, five minutes before the deadline, 
Uh, as you can see, the deadline is 11, uh, it's always 11 p.m. Um, Central European uh, time. So if anything happens to, 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 to the connection, internet connections, because if it happens to our platform, we should uh, take this responsibility. But if anything is wrong with your connection, or there is too many people entering the platform at the same time, of course, it's a, it's a large platform, but if anything happens, uh, you risk. Uh, and sometimes we receive uh, emails the urgent emails just five minutes after the deadline. Sorry, we we cannot do anything. My background is law, and as a lawyer, I ca I can tell you that if the deadline is at eleven p.m., we cannot do anything five minutes later. Uh, what uh, what else? Of course, if you have uh, specific uh, questions uh, which are not included in um, instructions or uh, frequently asked questions section, you may always contact us via email. The email address is also provided. Also, will be provided in the end of this meeting, uh, this webinar, in the chat box. Don't hesitate to apply by the January deadline. As Anna said, we uh, at this stage we select the Erasmus Modus Excellence Scholarships holders. But if you have a, a very good application, but you, you are not awarded a scholarship, you may also be offered a place into the program. So don't hesitate to apply uh, uh, before the January deadline. And you here have a link uh, to our application platform. I'm going to present you uh, EPSA, which is the European Belt Students and Alumni Association. Uh, I'm, I'm the president of this association, and uh, we have uh, multiple persons from the board uh, here. Um, we have been created in 2013, and as we said, we represent the incoming, uh, current, and uh, alumni uh, uh, from, from the program. We facilitate um, uh, the links between all our, our, small, our uh, small and increasing uh, community uh, family, and also doing the link between the um, students and alumni and uh, the European Bells um, Association. Uh, so we have uh, a board uh, uh, who, who will take the decision for decision, but also representative in each one of the cohorts of the program. So as Sanders said, I'm the representative for the Erasmus Mendes Association, which is an official AISBL nonprofit registered in Belgium. And it was founded in 2006 and supports and represents students and alumni of all the ENGM. So all 147 of them currently. And for example, there's opportunities to represent your country like I do, and also the program like I do. And I actually go get to meet with the European Commission this weekend to discuss issues in higher education. So it's a very exciting way to engage within Europe. We have new members on the team of IFSA uh, uh, now, and I also wanted to talk about um, uh, we have a mentorship program between uh, students and alumni. So as we said, uh, um, once you come into the IFSA family, we, we, we welcome you even after the, the, the program. Uh, so here's the picture of the new uh, team recently elected. And now moving on to questions we received. From this year, you can submit a proof of previous degree taught in English if you are uh, doing a pathway in French or French and Spanish. And for other pathway, there is a list of countries exempted to provide uh, English tests on our website. If you are not, uh, if your country is not in the list, then you have to, to provide the proficiency proof. I think I saw, don't wait to register for language tests because sometimes in some countries you don't have that many dates. So you have to think about it now and register now for the questions. Multiple times before we have students that come from everywhere. For example, on the board last year, there was a woman who had her master's in advertising before she came to EPH. So you can really do whatever. I know many of you ask, am I eligible? I study this. Yes, if you fulfill the requirements, as Anna mentioned before, you are eligible. And it's great to have a diverse view because public health is multidisciplinary in and of itself. Though we do have many medical doctors many don't have a medical degree and that's awesome as well and they talked about it a little bit in application but really focus on the coherence between your background the project and the experience that you have and the pathway specialization that you've chosen the question about 
can we work uh, during the program? Uh, so some students have found part times or online jobs, but you have to uh, pay attention uh, because sometimes students visa doesn't allow to work um, in the country you, you will be in. And also, as you can see, it's a full time program, so you have to uh, to see whether you can reconcile your studies and maybe uh, uh, a part time job. We also had questions regarding pathway, how to choose between Sheffield and Dublin. Happy to share my experience of Sheffield. <laughs> so like I said, I did my first year at Sheffield University. Um, it's a very high ranking university. So I would say um, that's one of the major reasons that I chose the university. Um, the program was um, together with regular MPH students. So we were quite a large cohort, like amongst the um, university students, we were MPH students and EPH students. So you'll get the chance to interact with even more students that have like even more diverse um, backgrounds, as well as your EPH colleagues. Um, I would say the Sheffield program was really, really good and really interesting. and. I was also able to access the curriculum even before applying for the um, Europop Health program. I had a look at the curriculum online. Um, I think you can still access this curriculum and you can still look at the one for Dublin as well and compare based on the programs available. And you also have the chance to pick extra courses in the second year in Sheffield, in the second term, sorry, in Sheffield. My first year was in Dublin. So Dublin is another English taught university among those choices. So like, I think that Dublin is compared to Sheffield is like, it's the capital in Ireland. So if you are someone who would love to live in the city, that would be a nice choice for you. And also in Dublin, like we have two semester, however, for the, the, the program design is quite sure because that for each semester is, only like 12 weeks. So it's quite short and it's very intense for all the curriculums or the loadings. And also like uh, for each semester, we could only choose one elective module. So I think that's quite different from Sheffield. And uh, especially like Dublin is quite, like, like UK is quite far away from other countries as well. So, if you really want to have some different experience in other like European countries, maybe Dublin is one of your choice. And also like in Dublin, because uh, in our program, we study with uh, local students as well. And from my cohort, like we have like more than 80 international, more than 80% of international students in our cohort. So you could get lots of opportunities to interact with uh, students from different backgrounds. And also like in our course, we and kind of study with uh, uh, training medical doctors as well. So you could have more opportunities to interact with local authorities in terms of medicine, in terms of uh, medical departments. And I think most interestingly for the second semester, we have another module, which is called like international health. So in that module, like we have lots of opportunities to have different speakers from all my, lots of countries from Europe, and they could also share very, very practical and useful experience and tips for you if you really want to gain some experience in Europe. So I think that's kind of the feature of solving. So quickly about Granada, I uh, would like to say to people that, as Mathilde say, there are a few people who applied for the Spanish, Spanish sorry, or French uh, pathway. And, and again, I'm not from a Spanish speaking country because I'm from France and I applied for a Spanish speaking country. Um, I will not say, uh, I, I will not have enough word to say how wonderful the year was in Granada last year. Um, it was very interesting and it's really important to have the core competencies you need uh, for the second year. Uh, so Granada was totally able to provide it and the life uh, and also the personal, the social, uh, like the Andalusian life was uh, very interesting. 
And for the second year, why the governance and leadership and European public health? I chose it because um, this was something I knew a little but in informal way. And I wanted to have a more proper, more formal education about all this, this uh, kind of, um, of subjects. And I'm stopping for uh, Granada, but we can now talk about the French speaking uh, education. So uh, I'm from I'm Spain, Spanish. So I would say that I applied for uh, for a uh, for a Belgium uh, Belgium University to Udesh. I just basically chose that because because of my track. I wanted to do a one health uh, approach. So the first year there, I knew that I researched a bit about and the program is suited for 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 environmental health. That's why I applied mostly for a. a French speaking country. It didn't matter so much about the language that they speak. It was more, much more about the program. So they are also, uh, I would say that the, the university was really diverse and normally there are not so many apply, uh, applicants for, for from your public health uh, program into, into Liège because it's a French speaking country. Uh, but still, you you are you are sharing with people who are actually from there, from the local program of uh, uh, public health master. So you can also make other connections and what's on. I would say that it was really, really enriching for me the experience. Even if I was alone there, I just met up, encountered other people from there and other initiatives, really green initiatives that they are going on there. So uh, if you are in green and sustainability and what's on, I would definitely go for 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 Liège. Also, question about housing: Is there any uh, support to find housing um, for your first and uh, second year? So there is uh, support from your university that they provide information uh, on how to find an accommodation. However, you still have to look for accommodation by yourself, and usually there are options to live on campus or off campus. Yeah, hi, I live on the campus of, uh, of Maastricht, uh, just in the same neighborhood as the faculty. Uh, there is a residence uh, in Maastricht. So yeah, it's some in some countries you just have to uh, know that, of course, um, uh, just have some information about the housing prices, because in some countries it's a little more expensive than in others. Um, for instance, can the language proficiency <clears throat> be sent after the deadline? Uh, no, I'm sorry. All the uh, language uh, proofs have to be um, uh, provided uh, before the deadline, uh, together with the whole application. Uh, there were also a question about the screenshot. Yes, it can be a screenshot of provisional uh, result you uh, you received from the organization uh, which uh, was organizing your uh, your English or French or Spanish test. Uh, so it's accepted. Another question which which I should answer is about um, uh, the grades conversion. There was a question about uh, transcript with grades in percentage. Uh, this is okay, absolutely fully okay. Please do not uh, try to convert grades uh, by your own. Uh, we will uh, do it. Uh, people who evaluate uh, this part of uh, applications uh, are experienced and can 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 do this. So please do not do not try to to translate your uh, your uh, national um, grading system into I don't know into the one used by by uh, by Europac. Then there were uh, next questions uh, about um, about language uh, proficiency. Uh, so I will repeat that uh, if uh, if uh, you come from Nigeria and the, 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 the whole education was taught in, in English, but the university or other schools are, uh, you were in are located in Nigeria or any other country which is not on the list published on our website, you need to provide uh, the uh, English test. Uh, do we need to apply for each university uh, or is the EP EPH application is sufficient? So as we said, uh, you apply for the whole program. You don't need to apply for the first year university and uh, separately for a second year university. When you go on our application platform, you do an application for the 
program as a whole, you choose your first year, uh, your first year, and then your second year specialization. But you apply on uh, only once, and your application is uh, jointly evaluated by uh, the consortium. Uh, another question I saw: uh, there is no interviews within this application selection procedure. We do not call you. We can send you email if something is is um, unclear. Oh, for instance, when you uh, provide when you when you submit uh, your um, documents like uh, uh, like um, a copy of your transcript or a degree or a, uh, language test result, please uh, check if it's readable because uh, sometimes we receive documents which cannot be read. And, and, and in this case, of course, we always ask uh, um, this candidate to, to retry and to send us uh, via email a better copy. Uh, so this is also important because we have to, to, to see what is in the document. Any recommendation? How did you explain it? Maybe how did you choose your specialization? In the motivation letter, you have to explain your first year and your second year, and you have to explicitly explain why you choose this pathway first and specifically why you chose this second year. So uh, we invite you to read, to read through only on the website of all the universities to see what's inside the program and to explain why you're interested in this specific um, uh, curriculum. We also have a specific question about Granada. How is the class schedule in Granada and what are the housing and living costs? So the schedule usually was, um, if I remember well, uh, I think it was from 9, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m., 3 p.m. So I think it's, it's, a quite, um, it's a quite good schedule. You have time to, to study at home, to do some other activities, a sport, um, also to recreate like in a different way. Um, maybe Granada is like the, che the, the cheapest uh, of, of all the other pl of the places we were. Um, and personally, I, I remember I, I paid more or less like um, 300 euros for, for uh, a room uh, with a bathroom. I was in the city center. So um, there is also like um, food is, is quite cheap. There is like a, a culture called uh, tapas, which means like um, it's a, a drink uh, and you can get like a, a portion, a, a little portion of food, but you, you can keep asking for, for drinks and they will keep bringing you food. So maybe, maybe Granada, well, Granada is, a, is a great option and, and I will never regret to, to be there. And usually, yeah, yeah, we all enjoy a lot being there. When acceptance results are released, so it's written on our website and in a, on the application platform, but you will get the results uh, nine weeks after the deadlines. A question I received a few days ago about the personal life. Uh, the two questions were, um, if I am this age, can I apply for uh, this program? And if I have children, if I have a personal life, I have to say that um, uh, some of us have more than 30 years old. So yeah, you can apply and you can be uh, accepted even though uh, you are more than 30 years old. There's no uh, no problem with that. And we have some of um, some of uh, our students also had their families, some children, some partners. So after it's how you manage your own personal life, which is uh, um, as, uh, as you know, because you're already students, uh, it's up to you after. But yes, uh, we have people with more than 30. Yes, we have people with children. Yes, we have people who are graduated before who work and who came back to study. So yeah, this is also a possibility. It's a question related to the details of your work experience. Um, as in this application form, the section uh, work experience, Indeed, there's not uh, too much space maybe for all details. You may always add something uh, in your uh, motivation letter. Also in your CV, it can be also, it can be explained also, also, also there. Yeah, as I talked about earlier, um, EPH and uh, IPSAS so, um, uh, put a mentorship program in our 
since last year. So uh, it's an exchange between uh, current student and, and alumni first. And also uh, because um, uh, every year uh, we're doing what we call the integration module. So all the people from the program, the H University goes together uh, in Rennes in France. And during these days, um, uh, we could also have some uh, um, uh, contents about the, the professional future of, uh, of the students. So yeah, um, uh, clearly uh, we, uh, we and, and, and the consortium uh, do, do something about, about that. There were several questions uh, regarding um, the position of your referee. So yes, uh, both of uh, referees can be from your academic um, environment, yes. I am from this country, can I apply? Students from all countries can apply, really, whether you are European, non-European, from any country in the world, you can apply. Someone asked about the proof of residence later, like what should be included in the, the, the later? The country? and uh, the city you live in. Of course, the city, if the country is really small, like uh, Andorra in Europe or Singapore, uh, it will be obvious that this is this place, this city, city and country at the same time. Uh, but uh, the country and city, uh, because as I said before, uh, the amount of the scholarship depends on the place you are when you, uh, apply. Uh, so the European Commission needs to, to know it. And there was also a question if it could be a letter from your a document a certificate from your employer. Yes, it can be from your workplace. Um, uh, if, uh, if your application is selected and we think that this uh, approval resi residence uh, is not the best one or is not sufficient because there is no this 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 important information about the city. We we can ask you uh, personally via email uh, for maybe adding uh, something which really proves that you um, stay here or here. Anyway, I will repeat it. It does not influence the selection process. So uh, I would say it's mandatory, but it doesn't influence. Um, if uh, your application will be selected or not. Thank you so much for uh, your participation. Uh, thank you to all the panelists for their inputs, for responding to, to questions. I'm sorry we may not uh, have the time to answer all questions, but here are our contacts. And a special thank you uh, to the Andalusian Region School of Public Health for the technical support. Uh, for this uh, for this webinar thank you very much everyone and yeah we are looking forward to receiving your applications and maybe we'll see you at the uh, in september <laughs>